，不管是国小、国中的时候，对，其实假日的时候，就是有空的时候，都会回来家里面帮忙。She is one of hundreds of farmers in Taiwan who grow atemoya, a variety of custard apple. Its taste is also quite Q, and it also has a little bit of sweetness in the middle, so it has a very unique flavor. It's one of the island's most popular fruit exports. It's one of the island's most popular fruit exports. Every season, farmers like She export around 14 million kilos, and 90% of that goes to China. But in September of 2021, China banned all imports of atemoyas. They claimed they had pests. Overnight, She lost 70% of his orders. But this story is about more than just fruit, pests, or trade. Atemoyas are a symbol of deep tensions between Taiwan and China that have been simmering for decades. So how did this innocent tropical fruit get caught in the middle of all this? The complicated relationship between China and Taiwan dates back to the 1940s. Back then, China was in the middle of a brutal civil war between the nationalists and the communists. When the communists won, they established the People's Republic of China on the mainland. The nationalists fled to Taiwan, and called it the Republic of China. They both declared themselves the rightful ruler of China, a claim that only the mainland really upholds. Taiwan isn't officially recognized as an independent country, but it has developed into a self-governing democracy with a constitution, legislature, and president. Since the civil war ended, Taiwan's KMT party has been in power most of the time. And while they maintain sovereignty, they also grew closer to China. But in 2014, many felt they got too close. They passed a trade pact that opened up Taiwanese industries to Chinese investment. And thousands of protesters stormed the government. They feared the pact would hurt Taiwan's economy and leave it vulnerable to pressure from China. Soon after, Taiwan's opposition party was voted into power for only the second time in the island's history. And this new president continued to push back against China. So, Instead, China has intensified its pressure campaign to unify Taiwan with the mainland. Military incursions are on a steep rise. China has sent hundreds of fighter jets into Taiwanese airspace, and they've conducted military drills designed to intimidate. They've also coerced other countries and world organizations from formally recognizing Taiwan. A big part of China's pressure campaign comes down to isolating Taiwan from the rest of the world. But with this tropical fruit, China is doing something different. It's pressuring Taiwan from within. China is Taiwan's largest trading partner. More than a quarter of all exports go to the mainland. And that's in part because they offer incentives, like dropping all tariffs on these Taiwanese fruits. And this net can easily trap farmers, like Xie, who switched to growing atemoyas exclusively seven years ago. There was so much money to be made selling to China that many farmers in the region also switched to Atamoya, and production tripled. This brought jobs and a more sustainable economy. But there was a catch. 
Because of all the incentives China offers Taiwan, a huge number of farmers rely on China to make a living. And this creates a dangerous dependency because it allows China to disrupt trade flow with, say, a fruit ban. That hurts fruit farmers in Taiwan, which could push them into blaming the government for worsening relations with China. And while the threat might be aimed at Taiwan's government, it's farmers like She who feel the impact the most. Since the ban, his income has dropped by more than 50%. At the Moyes are the latest target, but not the only one. China also banned wax apples, and in early 2021, pineapples too. Just like with Atemoyas, China claimed the pineapples had pests. Pineapples are the most popular fruit exported to China. They account for about 60 million US dollars. So pineapple farmers are stuck in the same cycle of dependency. But for this ban, Taiwan tried something different. They launched a campaign, and it went viral. World leaders and diplomats posed with a Taiwanese pineapple. And Japan and Hong Kong replaced China as Taiwan's top pineapple importers. Domestically, citizens bought an entire year's worth of pineapple exports in four days. Restaurants across the island added pineapple to everything. And it helped. But dependency on China runs deep. China wasn't just a big market. It was an especially profitable one, too. That's because if Taiwan doesn't sell fruit to China, their only choice is to go north to Japan and South Korea. Further south, in Southeast Asia, tropical fruits are much cheaper. Longer distances are also complicated for fresh fruits that require cool temperatures and special storage conditions. At home, the Taiwanese government has offered financial help, but most of it is going to exporters and not small farmers. <laughs> Chukotoyangho 到这个生产者，到呃贸易商，都要重新正视这个问题。这些事情理论上在中国市场非常依赖的时候，就应该要去开始做，做总比不做好。So instead of trying to replace the deep-rooted market China created, some farmers are starting to replace their crops. 還有轉有的就投資去鄉郊後芋頭這樣這有都在我們的一個考量範圍啦可能會等這個採集告一段路之後然後我們會再討論說之後要朝哪個方向去去做經營的一個方向的改變 because as long as Taiwan's farmers are trapped in the middle of this geopolitical fight, their livelihoods will always be at risk.